Hello there, welcome back to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday restoration. Today's cadaver on the slab is this Conway Stewart Model 58 from around the late 50s to the early 60s. This pen was made famous if you're a pen nerd and can see a blurry black blob as a Conway Stewart 58. <laughs> In the film Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, there is a scene in a tank where Indiana Jones's father, played by Sean Connery, is fighting a German and squirts him in the eye with, with the ink from a lever-filling fountain pen, uh, which happens to be this model, the uh, Conway Stewart Model 58. Uh, you can't see that in the film, actually. Uh, the prop maker from the film contacted Conway Stewart and let them know that he was using a Conway Stewart 58. And Conway Stewart has recently, uh, I think 2019, come out with a new model commemorative Indiana Jones Last Crusade fountain pen in that scene in the film after Sean Connery subdues the German. Denholm Elliott says, Ooh, the pen is mightier than the sword. The pen is mightier than the sword. So Conway Stewart released a pen commemorative of that Indiana Jones movie, The Pen is Mightier Than the Sword, a Conway Stewart 58 replica, sort of a remake of this model. Of course, the newer one is a cartridge converter as well as being a lever filler if you want. Uh, and they're about $600, something like that. I bought this one on eBay. So here's a package from England. I purchased a vintage pen on eBay and it came all the way from England. So let's open it up and you'll see what it is. And there it is. Unrestored shape, some deep gouges in it. Let's see if there's any imprints on this. Here we go. So it says Conway Stewart 58 made in England. I've been looking for a Conway Stewart 58. It is the classic of the Conway Stewarts, and I'm hoping that I can repair this pen. It's a 14 karat gold Conway Stewart nib. It has some really nice flex to it. The section doesn't come off, posts nicely, and it's a nice well-balanced pen. It's a lever filler, and I doubt that there's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's very crunchy. I'm hoping there's a pressure bar in there, but I'll have to take this pen apart, see what kind of sack it takes and whether I can get this old Conway Stewart to write. And we'll do some research on it and find out when this might have been made. Here's another Pen Resurrection candidate. And what we're going to do today is we're going to first triage this pen and see what's wrong with it and how I can get it writing and what I need to do to get it writing again. And I'll do some writing samples and then some thoughts on how the restoration went, if it goes at all. But first, let's triage this pen. Let's move in a little closer. It's in pretty good shape, I think. Uh, the gold doesn't have much corrosion on it. The lever has a little bit of corrosion on it. When I got the pen first, I had to determine what it needed in terms of a sack and whether that pressure bar in there was okay. So I added some heat to the pen and removed the section and I filmed the results. So here's that clip right now. Having never worked with a Conway Stewart before, I didn't know what size sack this might be. And so I needed to heat off the section and I didn't know how these were put on. I assumed correctly that they were uh, shellacked on. And so I used my heat gun with this deflector on it and just turned it in front of the deflector like that. And it took quite a while and uh, quite a bit of gentle heat to get that to release. And when it did, it took most of the old sack out. Here it is here. And you can see that it's just crumbled into dust. But that allowed me to look at the inside and see what's going on in there. You can see there's still some sack in there that I need to get out. So I'll use my tweezers. There we go. There's the rest of the sack. Clear so I can see what the mechanism looks like. There's the pressure bar and it's working perfectly. So there's no need to do any repairs to that. And you can see that there's quite a bit of scarring 
on the barrel and here's the section and you can see it's still caked with ink there's all this caked on old sack that needs to come off uh, and the feed looks like it's in really good shape as does the nib and once we've got that nib out of there we can polish it up and the nib says Jiro Conway Stewart 14 CT gold looking at the cap it's uh, pretty gnarly looking I'm sure all this will come right off three gold bands gold clip with the CS Conway Stewart logo on it in a diamond uh, top finial jewel and that clip moves a little bit so I'm not sure how that is affixed in there whether it unscrews or not but we'll figure that out put the pen together and there it is the Conway Stewart 58 classic model and then we'll give the whole thing a nice clean and polish and then I'm going to add a new PVC sack to this pen and see whether we can get this pen filling and writing again so I already had this section off this is what the section looks like with the remnants of that sack on the end and I got all the remnants of that sack out of there so next steps I'm going to get all of that desiccated sack off of there by scraping it and then we're going to knock out this feed so I get my exacto blade and I'm going to get my eyes on can't do anything without my eyes and this is what my eyes look like my magnifiers with a light and I'm just going to scrape that old desiccated sack off of there with my exacto blade and that's going to go on the ultrasonic bath uh, in some pen flush which is a nine parts distilled water and one part ammonia so I got the parts out of the ultrasonic bath and the first thing I want to do is see if I can remove that clip I'm going to take a little rubber matting and put a, a card under the clip first just to protect the rest of that celluloid from getting damaged and I'm going to use the rubber mat press down rubber and pencil just inside the cap like that to give some pressure to push against it was already a little bit loose but let's see if I can twist it off this works on vacuumatics Parker vacuumatics and Parker 51s let's see if it works oh yeah oh yeah it came nope I think it's coming off it's really loose now see how loose it is now and that looks like it's unscrewing yep there we go so this is really much very much the same system that Parker uses for its and Jules holds the clip on allows me to polish up that clip separately from the rest of this and that jewel as well I'll polish that up yeah I think that's the first time that's been off of there now we have to knock this feed out of that section I've soaked it for about an hour now I'll put it in my bills block and we'll have to see which of these holes works there that's the one that works right there and then we find a bar that fits that one's too big and that one seems to be just right I'm gonna get out my hammer and raise up the height of this camera so I can get a good whack at this section and see whether it budges Pretty loosey goosey in there. I'm gonna add a little bit of my favorite thing here, my blue tack, stick tack, just to the end of that section. Let's run it around a little bit like that, just so it stays stable, so it doesn't wobble around when I try to hit it. No, oh, the camera's still too low. There, I've got lots of height. Well, that was easy. <laughs> that was a lot easier than I expected. And where's the nib? Good God, it's gone. Hundred dollar check from my grandma, and my dad said I need to put it in the bank so it can grow over the years. Well, that's fantastic. A really smart decision, young man. We can put that check in a money market mutual fund, and it's gone. Oh, uh, what? It's gone. It's all gone. What's all gone? The money in your account. It didn't do too well. It's gone. What do you mean? I, I have a hundred dollars. Not anymore. You don't. Poof. Well, well, what can I do to get back? I'm my... sorry, sir, but this line is for bank members only. Oh, there it is. And there she be. 14 karat gold, Juro. A little old ink. So I'll let this soak for a bit and then we'll run it on a polishing cloth and see how shiny we can get that. And here's our ebonite feed. It's a long one. Look how long that is. Nice wide channel down the center. 
We'll polish that up a bit. That's the part that shows. Keep those channels clear. And the section looks very nice. Get all that blue tack off of there. And that's looking very clean. I still have some of that old shellac to get off of there. Maybe I'll sand that down a little bit. Once we've polished up the nib and soaked the feed, we'll put it all back together again and then resack it. Okay, so I've cleaned and polished some parts. I polished up the feed so that the visible part of the feed is very shiny. And I polished up the nib. A little metal polish in my, and on my jewelry cloth. And you can see that at the base of the nib right there, it says 58. So it is the nib for a 58. I actually put the feed and the nib together, put it back in the section, and put the section back in the barrel, and dip tested the nib just to check it. And this is what it looks like. It skipped a little bit to start, but that's okay. I'm going to check with my Richard Binder chart to see what the line thickness is. Four to five millimeters. That's about a 0.5 millimeter line right there. So that's a uh, Western fine. Um, it felt very smooth and had lots of flexibility, uh, but there are some sharp edges on it. So it's going to need a little tuning uh, once I get it all back together again. But I polished up the clip and it's come up even more beautiful than I expected. There is some corrosion around there, some loss of uh, plating, uh, which is uh, called brassing, just a little bit. I thought there was more than that, but just around the edge there. I polished up the section with some polishing compound and it looks very nice. And I polished the barrel and there's a lot of micro abrasion scratches, no deep gouges in the barrel, which is good. I polished up the lever. It had a lot more brassing on it, but uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, the cap is the thing that needs more attention. As you can see, that clip went around and put a nice gouge all the way around. So I'm going to have to mask these gold rings off, which were also polished up and came up very nicely. But I'm going to mask those off and go at this with some, uh, probably some 400 grit to get down into that groove first and then go through my micro mesh uh, levels from 1500 through 12,000 and then some polishing compound and then some polish and we'll see how well that cap comes up. But I wanted to spend a moment with the sack and uh, a lot of people have asked me how do you determine what sack you put uh, in these pens? Well you have a choice of either PVC which this is or latex which is what the vintage pens always had. PVC is more impervious to degradation over the years and from solidifying, petrifying, whatever the latex does. Uh, but I'm going to put PVC in this one. But there's a lot of different sizes of uh, sacks out there and you have to determine which is the right size for this particular section. So what you do is you get out your calipers and you measure the outside of that nipple on the back of the section and I'm getting seven right there. So that's seven millimeters. And sacks are sized in 60 fourths of an inch. So I've made this chart that converts sack size. So you see the sack sizes on the right in 60 fourths. So let's take a 16, for example, in the middle there. The sack size is called 16. That's 16 60 fourths of an inch, which I've calculated on my spreadsheet here as 0 0.250 inches. And then I've calculated that that is 6.35 millimeters. I measured seven millimeters, so I looked down the left-hand side for something that's close to seven, and that would be on row 19, it's sack size 18. But I'm going to go down a size because I want that sack to not just to slide on top, but to expand onto that nipple a little bit. So I'm going to go down a size, so that means that I'm going to look for a number 16 size sack. And I just happen to have this PVC sack as a size 16. So I'm going to use that sack on this pen. But I think the first thing I'm going to do is mask off this cap band and go at that deep scratch there and polish this up. And then while I'm going through my micro mesh, mask off that lever as well so I don't ruin its gold. And we'll go over this barrel uh, with the micro mesh as well. 
So here I've masked the cap bands off so I don't ruin that gold. And I'm going to go at that scratch with, there's the deepest part of it right there. You see how deep that is. And go at it with some 400 grit flexible sandpaper. I'm going to have to do it sort of evenly all the way around so I don't get a divot in there. And of course I've got my eyes on for this so I can see it close up. You can see right there, still a little bit of that scratch remaining. I can just see a faint line right there <laughs> remaining. So I end up going over the whole thing with the 400 grit quite a lot. It's amazing how deep a uh, scratch can go. So it just leaves that fine line all the way around. It's really, really difficult to see it. I can l see it in certain angles still there, but I'm going to go up through the rest of the uh, micro meshes and each stage will tell me whether I've gotten that scratch out or not. If I go past a certain micro mesh stage and I still see that line there, uh, that it's perceptible, I have to go back again and start back at the coarsest grade. So I've gone over it quite extensively with the 1200 grit, the uh, coarsest grit of micro mesh that I have. And I want to make sure I get all of the 400 grit scratches out at this stage because if I don't get them now, finer grades won't get it at all. I'm going to spend a little bit more time here at 1200 grit to get all those 400 lines out there. Now I'll move up through the grades. Okay, now that I've stepped through all the micro mesh pads, I've taken the masking off and I'm going to use some Anderson's micro gloss number five, which is a polishing compound. And then I'll follow it up with the micro gloss number one, which is a polish. Uh, very, very low grit polish. And there we go. That's with the polishing compound. I still have a little haze right there where the masking was. I'm going to put the polishing compound on it anyway. Just the fine, fine grit polish. This is much more like a liquid, whereas the other is more like a paste. And finish off with a microfiber cloth, and it looks pretty good. That horizontal scratch is completely gone. There's still a little bit of haze right there. It's a lot better than it was. So good, in fact, I think I'm going to put the clip and top jewel back on again. There's my clip. There's my jewel. I'm not going to risk scratching that barrel again. So I'll introduce a little card first so that clip doesn't scratch that cap get the thread started. Now, I haven't polished the jewel because I'm going to polish it in place with the clip holding it. So there we go. Get my HB pencil and my mat and then we're going to push and turn and try to make that clip as tight as we can get it. I want to adjust it a little bit so it's between those two breather holes. There, that looks about in the middle. I'll try to tighten it again. See if it moves. That's good. There. Now we need some little bit of polish on that top finial. It's just plastic, I think. So I'm going to use the polishing compound on it. Just a little dabble, do ya? And we're just going to rub it around in circles. That did the trick. Very nice. So here's a little size comparison uh, with some other pens. Some are vintage, some are not. This is a not vintage, but older Mont Blanc 149 rose gold trim. This is a Waterman's 100 year pen from the 40s. This is the Conway Stewart 58. And this is a 1930s Parker Vacumatic. It's interesting to see the relative vintage sizes. So the whole pen is now polished up. I did the barrel as well as the cap and all the gold trim and the section isn't in it yet 
I've polished up the section, the nib and the feed. And so we got to put them all back together again and then replace the sack. Need some gripping material. And I'm just going to run a little bit of fine sandpaper around that feed just to make it a little bit more slippery so it'll go through to the back. It sort of sticks right there without the nib. And with the nib, it's going to get a lot stickier. I'm just going to rough it up a little bit. Make sure that channel was clear. And I just roughed it up a little bit there. And it should make it slide a little bit better through there. It's still sticky a little bit. Just at this end. And we get that familiar brown color of the ebonite, black hard rubber, and that car tire smell. So you know that it's ebonite and I've polished it at this end. Yeah, that's going a little bit better. There we go. If it slides but it's firm, when the nib isn't present, then when you introduce the nib, it will be tight. I'll line that feet up right there. And I'm just turning it to see where it's the least resistance, which is about there. And then I'm gonna push it all the way in, as far as I can go. That's what she said. <laughs> what are you laughing at? He did a that's what she said joke. Because that's what she said. Oh, that's not funny. <laughs> And if it gets right to there to flush, then we're good. And it's still aligned. And next we'll attach that sack. So now we're ready to resack this pen. I've taken the PVC uh, sack and just slipped it on temporarily to check for fit, whether I need to trim it or not. But it goes in all the way. As you can see, if I test fit it here, we're not running into the end of the barrel. So it moves in there pretty nicely. And I've got my shellac syringe from uh, the Inky Nib. Crank up a little bit of shellac just on the tip of that brush. This is just the perfect tool for this. So I'm going to add a little bit more once I've got it on here. Let's see whether I can slide that in. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, no. And yeah, I could just tease it on there. Whoa, just a little bit. Who thought these nails were good for anything other than playing guitar? I had thought about cutting my nails because of the number of really rude complaints that I get about the length of my fingernails because of my guitar playing. And I'm not playing guitar all that much these days. So I thought, well, maybe I'll trim them so I don't quite get so much flack. But then I said, well, I miss these nails when it comes to little jobs like this. I'm going to add a little bit more to seal that edge from leakage. And thank you for this cool device to Scott Pauly of the Inky Nib. A wonderful idea. Okay, I've had a change of heart about the PVC. Uh, when I was first talking about this pen, I mentioned it was celluloid. That little slip of the tongue uh, had me thinking because I thought at the time I was wrong, that it isn't celluloid, it's plastic, because this is a later version of the Conway Stewart 58 uh, from the late 50s through to the early 60s. And I thought by then they had dispensed with celluloid and they were going to injection molded plastic. Even though I said it was celluloid, in my mind, I was thinking it was uh, plastic and therefore a PVC sack would be just okay with it. And so I went ahead and put that on, but now I'm gonna take it off because celluloid and PVC do not react well together. Uh, that's why you should only use latex on these. And I went back to the Conway Stewart website where they said they were using uh, celluloid up till 1965. So this is definitely before that. So I'm going to cut what I've done here off, see if I can peel it off. And then we're gonna resack this pen with the latex. Now this is definitely too long, this one, and it's uh, one size smaller uh, than I need, but uh, so I'll have lower ink capacity, but it's all I've got at the moment. Let's put that back together. That would come to both those threads right there. So I'm gonna snip that off at that point and give it another coating. And we spread that sack just like that, 
fit it underneath and give it a twist. There. I'm going to let that sit like that and then put some more shellac on that little seam right there to seal it after it's dried some. So now this is dried, I'm going to put another coat of shellac on that seam there, right there. And that's all it takes. Now I can use a little bit of talc and spread it on the sack. It goes in smoothly anyway, but just to make sure it doesn't bind on the pressure bar. There we go. And I'm going to line up that lever with the nib and push it down. Make sure it's aligned so it doesn't bother my OCD any. And we're ready to fill that pen. Get some ink. Push the lever down. Flip it up. Wait for the sack to fill. Do it again. And I hear some bubbles, which is really good. And let's get some paper out here and see what we've got. I'm going to call this uh, 1958 Conway Stewart. 58. 58 for 58. There we go. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet. Let's check the flex. Yeah, it's flexible, all right. Look at that, beautiful. And it's smooth. Now I did align that nib a little bit. Uh, the tines were just very slightly misaligned. And then I gave it some figure eights on 6,000 grit, just like that. About eight of those and eight of those couple of circles here and there, up and down, right and left, all directions of the compass, and then go at it with the 12,000 in exactly the same pattern, like that, down, right, left, all directions. It did have a scratch to this side when you turned it to that side or that side, and so I kind of rolled it on the 8,000 and 12,000 grit to get that edge smoother. So that's rotating to the right. It's still writing, and it's not scratchy anymore. Rotating to the left, which doesn't happen with my right hand, of course. But here's the sweet spot right here. Very nice and smooth. So what are my thoughts on this restoration? I think this went very smoothly indeed. The only bump in the road was my own lack of care in identifying this material correctly. I did say celluloid on the video, you heard it, but it didn't actually register in my brain as I was working on the pen. So when I put the PVC sack on, I didn't think anything of it. While I was waiting for the shellac to dry, I was reading through the Conway Stewart webpage and discovered they used celluloid up until 1965. I had assumed that they had stopped making celluloid pens in the mid-50s, and I thought this late version of the Conway Stewart 58 uh, was plastic, but no. How about new, you crazy Dutch bastard? I smelled the barrel carefully, and it is indeed celluloid. So I replaced the PVC sack with latex. The PVC would have worked for a while, but it would have eventually rotted the celluloid from the inside out. So now the pen fills with ink, is shiny like new, and writes like a dream. The nib only required a tiny amount of tweaking with some micromesh. Some of the cadavers on my slab aren't so pretty and will take some work. I've never tackled a nib quite so mangled as this one. It's close up on this. Look at that. <laughs> this is a Parker Challenger from the mid 40s and this belongs to a friend and she asked if I could look at it and get it writing. Well, we shall see. I'll try out my new nib burnishing tool courtesy of Bill. I guess I should name this as well. Uh, Bill's Burnisher. How's that? We'll give Bill's Burnisher a try on this nib. 
I've never done it before, so don't expect stellar results. That might be DOA right there. But that's another dead pen for another Pen Resurrection Sunday. For now, I'm pleased that this Conway Stewart is living again. I might decide to sell this pen. I don't know. I'll write with it for a while and see how attached I become. If you're interested in the pens I do have for sale, just go to my Wix website listed in the description below. And there you have it. Thanks for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.